Okay, good morning genealogy friends. I'm pretty sure that I'm live, but I'm gonna check just to make sure. I have to do this thing where I go live on my computer. I am live, and then I have to check on my phone to make sure I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I hope you are all well on this Friday morning. Um, so I apologize, although I, I apologize slash not apologize, I don't even know. Uh, about not teaching yesterday. I apologized yesterday and then I feel like everybody was like, don't apologize. You're fine. Um, so I, I usually, I have been teaching Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And yesterday morning, I made the realization that I've kind of been making Thursdays work for the last couple of weeks, but it's been really tough. My husband's work schedule changed and now he works outside of the home on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we, uh, our kids are still in school and they're still doing school at home. And it's hard to expect them to just go on autopilot and handle their schoolwork and everything um, and, you know, just general kid nonsense while I'm preparing and teaching. And so for the foreseeable future, I will now only be teaching on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I posted a message about that yesterday and you guys were very sweet about telling me to enjoy the kid time, which, believe me, I'm very aware. Um, it's funny how doing genealogy really, like, makes you take a look at the timeline of your own life and the timeline of other people's lives and things like that. I'm very aware that the, uh, the time, the season in my life in which I wipe noses and make endless plates of chicken nuggets and listen to long stories about video games I don't really care about um, is going to be over before I know it. So anyway, that is the long story about where I was yesterday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will be here. Tuesday and Thursday, I will have my mom hat on full time. Um, in addition, while we're on the subject, I know that there are some of you who have been sitting in my email inbox for a little while. I The hard thing is that when I'm not on working, um, my inbox fills up very, very quickly. So I apologize if you've been waiting. I'm not ignoring you. I will say if you ever feel like I'm not getting back to you, I don't, I'm never offended if people send me repeat emails. Um, sometimes I laugh when I wake up and somebody has emailed me over and over and over again because we must be in different time zones um, and they can't believe that I'm not getting back to them, but I've been asleep all night. <laughs> so, uh, you know, remember that I am in Salt Lake City. So if you're somewhere where the sun is up and the sun is not up here, that could be why I'm not responding to you. Um, but yeah, if you're sitting in my inbox wondering if I'm just deciding not to talk to you, that's not what's going on and feel free to reach out again or just be patient. I'll get there eventually. Okay. So today's topic, I wanted to do a little tour of Cindy's list. Um, this looks like a slideshow and it's not, I'm just putting this up here because I wanted people to know what I was talking about. Um, Cindy's list is a great website and it's something that I think a lot of people get pointed to early in their genealogy, you know, family history research journey, because Cindy's List is such a good resource. But I, I think that the first few times I went to Cindy's List, it's a little overwhelming. And it's not, this is not a criticism at all. I think Cindy's List is, list is an amazing resource, especially considering it's free. It's definitely a labor of love, but it's not the most intuitive site. Um, it's one of those sites where you have to kind of show up knowing what you want to know. Uh, you can't wander in with the expectation that what you want is family history. Uh, if you have that broad of a of a starting place, then Cindy's List isn't the best place to start. But Cindy's List has something for literally everybody. There isn't a person watching this or who will watch it in the future who wouldn't uh, be able to get something out of using Cindy's List. So if you aren't using it and if you aren't using it on a regular basis, um, I thought maybe a little tour would talk you into it. So let me get out of my one page slideshow and let me hide this and let me figure out, what did I do with Cindy's list? Where did it go? Is it on here? No. Oh, it's down here in the corner. So I know I had it open. View and we're gonna go to full screen. Okay, so this is Cindy's list. The website address is cindyslist.com. Um, you just have to know how to spell Cindy. Uh, and when you get there, this is what it looks like. Now, it's one of the things where once you get used to using it, it's very, very easy and straightforward to use. But the first time I remember it showed up and I have a hard time when there's websites that have this sort of thin middle area with information. And then you've got links here, you've got links here, you've got links down here and you've got links up here. 
Um, I don't know if it's the, the book lover in me, but I actually always get a little overwhelmed when there's like a frame of links around information because I don't know where my eyes are supposed to look. So let's kind of go top to bottom. Um, so these are going to be your best links. These are the links that you're going to use all the time. We'll go through them in a minute. If you go way up here, there is a frequently asked questions. You can find information about Cindy and you can follow Cindy on social media. Um, and here we've got a search box and I will show you how to use that in a minute. On this side, you've got more links. That, it's basically the same links that are up here, but you've got, um, the, the, this is the easiest place to find where you can submit a new link, where you can see the latest links, which is the same as this what's new button. And then where you can report a broken link, which is really helpful and, um, you know, helps the whole community and helps Cindy out uh, or update a link. Um, and then there are some shop links right here. This originally linked to an Amazon store. It's a, you know, where you could have links to things that Cindy was recommending on Amazon. Um, that link is broken. So uh, that hasn't been fixed. And then the Cindy's List Boutique is a different page and you can find, you know, mugs and t-shirts that have this Cindy's List um, logo on it. Which by the way, just as we do a little sidestep, I have thought about doing things like that that have, you know, Family Tree Notebook I thought about making shirts that kind of look like the Family Tree Notebook pages, but then I had a moment where I was like, I don't know that anybody would wear those but me, so I haven't. I would just be curious if anybody was interested in that, you know, having a sweatshirt that said like Ancestor Profile down the side. I don't know why I think that that would be funny, but um, this is an ad. The advertisements are clearly marked, but you have to be careful because these ads are Google ads and they do try to... Google tries to have them blend into the page so that you sort of click on them on accident. So just know that there are going to be ads everywhere on this page. Um, down here at the bottom, there's some statistics and then you can browse the categories alphabetically. I don't ever use this um, because I just feel like going to the categories themselves is easier. We've got another ad here. Um, we have this sort of running list of news and things like that. I don't use that either. You have a donate button. Now, Cindy's List is a free website and it's really, again, labor of love. Cindy just does this because she wants to contribute to the genealogy community. So uh, donating to Cindy's List would be a good idea. The other way that she's getting income to, you know, to support her being able to work on this list is through these advertisements. So that's why they are up there. Um, and then you've got uh, pictures of Cindy's family and then we're back up to the top. Okay, so let's go through these top links before we look at the search. So categories is where you're going to kind of want to live. If I was going to bookmark any part of Cindy's list and save it for future reference, I would save the categories page because this is where you find everything listed on Cindy's list. Before we start clicking around, let's talk about what the point of Cindy's List is, because I think that understanding why Cindy's List is a thing uh, is kind of key to understanding how to use it. So Cindy's List is exactly what it sounds like. It's a list of links. It is not uh, a research website in its own right. Cindy's List doesn't hold any family information. It doesn't have um, it doesn't even have, you know, tutorials. This is, you know, beginning genealogy 101. It doesn't have anything like that. It has links to things like that. So this is, if you can imagine going into a big library and the library has all sorts of books for all of the things that you might be looking for. And then there's a, a big cabinet right when you first walk in, that's the card catalog. And that's how you can help yourself find books. It's kind of, you know, the map slash go to the drawer that has whatever you're interested in and then browse the books. That's what this is. So don't come to Cindy's list thinking that you're going to be able to stay on Cindy's list and find all of your information. That is not the point. Um, and because of that, sometimes when you're on Cindy's list, you know, this site is free. Cindy's list is free, but you might actually be connected to a website that isn't free or maybe you know, part of it's free, but the information that you wanted, you have to pay for. That has nothing to do with Cindy's list. Um, once you click a link and you're taken to a different website, you know, that's just between you and that website. Um, so I know that somebody, I had spoken to somebody and they were really frustrated because they felt like everything on Cindy's list you had to pay for. I'm not even sure what they were looking at because I do feel like most of the links on here do go to free resources, but um, 
if you find yourself at a website where they want you to pay a subscription or anything like that, that doesn't have anything to do with Cindy's list other than the fact that she might have been the, you know, the reason that you found that website. Um, so am I still live? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Just double checking. So keep that in mind. Um, now how this list link, or sorry, how this link list slash, you know, this card catalog is organized is alphabetically. Unfortunately, this can be a little overwhelming because some of these categories, for example, if we just went to Australia, there's 1600 links in Australia. If we click on Australia, knowing that, you know, okay, I'm from Australia, I've got family in Australia, that's where I want to do my research. It, it does try to keep narrowing it down so that you don't have to browse all 1600 Australia links. So you've got, you know, are you looking for birth, marriage, or death? Are you looking for electoral roles? Are you looking for the military? Are you looking for schools? Now, even when you go into these, there's going to be more, um, more alphabetized items. Okay, this was an easy, well, not easy, but, you know, this only has 13 links. That's reasonably easy to search. I know that when I've looked, let me back up. I have looked at China before. I'm going to go down. Uh, I think I got there through Asia. Is that true? Or did, okay, China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Um, and depending on where you're looking, if I'm looking for, see, Angel Island, California doesn't have too many things. But if I'm just looking for random things in China, oh no, where was I? I was on one that was multiple pages. Um, history and culture. Absolutely nothing. General resources. All right. Well, as I'm clicking through, I'm hoping that I'm not going too fast. You can see that there's a ton on here and they are um, organized. Of course, now I'm like, what was I looking at earlier? Uh, they are organized down into these other categories. Um, and some of these things are going to be things that will be very helpful for you. And then some of them are going to be things that, you know, it's like anything else. You go to a a new website and maybe it's not as easy to read as you thought. So here I've clicked um, this British Library India Office Records and Private Papers. And so now you can see I'm in a different, no thanks, I'm in a different website. Now I'm actually at the resource. I've left Cindy's list. This is not Cindy's lists area. If I had a problem with this website, I should not bother Cindy about it. I just, I want to keep underscoring that because I think people, because you're clicking through, uh, sometimes don't understand that they have now, you know, like left the building and they're somewhere else. Um, so when you just go to the general categories, you've got this huge link list and you have all of these different areas um, of the world. You've got different peoples. You've got different types of records. I mean, there's tons of categories on here. Not only are there all of the states, which I, I don't know, can we see that from this page? Oh yeah, you can go into all of the states. The thing is when you go into all the states, you also can then see the counties. I mean, for every single state, there's a page for every single state, a page for every single county in every state, which those of you who uh, aren't in the U.S., there's a ton of counties in the United States. And Cindy has gone through and just linked everything, which is amazing. Um, you also have uh, categories for all the Canadian provinces. You've got categories for the uh, U.K. counties. Um, just like in the, of course, you know, you saw the China one. There's general countries. There's Finland. And some of these are um, these huge huge categories. Here we've got surnames, family associations, and family newsletters. And there's um, more than 10,000 links in here. And this is going to be like if I was looking for anybody who's done anything with the Morgan family, I go to surnames M. Oh, stop that. And general resources. Do I have anything here? Let's see. Where would I want to look? Let's say I, I was looking in here and I'm thinking, okay, I want to look at where are the Morgans from? The Morgans are from the UK. But let's say I let's say I just want to look at Dead Fred and see if there are any photos that are Morgans. See, this has connected me directly to surnames that start with M on the Dead Fred website. I can come down. I'm sure there's going to be some Morgans because there's always Morgans. Dead Fred is another website that I'm just like, 
it's an it's an dead friend is another amazing resource more alice more morgan click on morgan and now i'm going to be looking at all of these uh photos i don't want to do a full tour of dead fred right now because i'm we're focusing on cindy's list but if you're wondering what i'm looking at dead fred is a place where people who have found photos you know photos that have been separated from their families they send them to dead fred and if the photo has some kind of information written on it dead fred will um they'll post the they'll post the picture and then they've got the okay that's a terrible scan um they have the the name and Edward Morgan Philadelphia PA is probably the information that was written on the back of this photo so it's kind of fun you never know what you're going to find I've actually never found anything great <laughs> on dead Fred but um it's just another fun fun resource anyway categories so this is where I would start like I said if you know what you're looking for if you know general areas of interest for your family then you can click through and it's going to give you a good idea of what's out there it's just a jumping off place so that you can um, deepen your research with new new places to look that you wouldn't have necessarily found again you don't want to be completely dependent on places like ancestry and family search because there's a lot of information out there about your family that's being held in small libraries small repositories um, people are putting their personal family archives up on blogs or little websites they're hosting themselves. And that's what Cindy's List is doing is that she's linking big repositories like the British Museum and then little repositories like, you know, Joe's Family Tree website dot com. Um, and she's putting them all into one place so that we can find them. Now, I do strongly suggest that you start with categories, but let's say that you really wanted to find something specific or you don't want to deal with this there is a search but the search has a caveat okay so let's say I wanted to look um, for China so I go in here I put China I hit this now what's gonna happen is you're going to get different websites up here about searching China and this is not part of Cindy's list this is the Cindy's list this is actually searching Cindy's list this is different why is that that's because, um, see how this says enhanced by Google? This is a Google search box. It's a little widget that you can put on your blog. And part of the way that, the reason that Google has made this search box is that when you search things like China, then the first things you're going to see are these ads that people are paying to Google to try to get people to click on their links. So Google is going to push those ads to the top of your search results, even though you're just trying to search this one website. And obviously, if I'm trying to search Cindy's list for China and my first um, result is China machining services, that's not what I'm looking for. But I have to know that. So especially if you're looking on your phone, this can be confusing because you hit search. And if you aren't scrolling down and this is all you're seeing, then you're going to be like, oh, I I guess she doesn't actually have a search box that searches her site. She does. You just have to scroll down. And once I get down here, then I've got China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, Cindy's list. Then I've got China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, people and families, library and archives, queries and surnames. And um, Google is arranging things. I don't know if you guys have spent any time thinking about how Google search results are um, populated. Google pushes the most popular stuff to the top because they are trying to get you to appreciate that you want to search things on Google and that Google's helpful. So most people who are searching China are clicking on just the general China category and then next they're clicking on people and families and so on. But you've got multiple pages here um, that you can go through and try to figure out. Again, I click to the new page and the top stuff is going to be Google ads. So I have to scroll down and then I have more links and this is all on Cindy's list, which you can also tell because it has the little web address for where you're going here. And when you click on those things, it opens up a new window, but you're still on Cindy's list. So that is what I wanted to say about, you know, again, I think that you should start with categories. <clears throat> what happened? Did I overwhelm it? <laughs> it's like, calm down, Carly. Um, I think you should start with categories, but you can use the search box. All right. If you, I, I would be very surprised if there's anybody out there who has gone through all of the links on Cindy's list and has read them and exhausted the the list of links that she has put out there for everything outside of Cindy. I'm sure that Cindy has, 
um, the rest of us, I really can't imagine anybody has gone all the way through. However, if you are really just crawling around Cindy's list every day and you're wondering, you know, I've seen everything that she's posted, so what is new? She does put her newest links into these um, lists and you can see these are the new links for the 23rd of April. I mean, Cindy's very busy. So there are new links coming out all the time. You can see 22nd of April, suddenly she's got a link for the National Library of Medicine in Bethesda, Maryland. She's got uh, tuberculous uh, sanatorium information. She's got this physician's database. Like all of a sudden there's all of these great links that have just been added. And so, you know, just because you've been on Cindy's list before, that doesn't mean that if you haven't, if you didn't find anything that you wanted to find last time, or if you found things, but you think, okay, yeah, I've been on Cindy's list when I grabbed the links. Um, it's an ever growing, ever evolving list that really, I mean, I cannot say enough how impressive it is that Cindy stays on top of this and fixes the broken links and puts in the new links and answers her email and all that sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, you just, you know, if you wanted to browse what's new, I find that looking through categories over and over again and seeing if there's anything new that way is more efficient just because I don't come on here every single day to see what's new just in case. Um, I guess I probably totally could. That wouldn't be the worst idea now that I think about it. If I was working in a family history center or if I was a family history librarian or if I was, I guess, a working genealogist uh, doing research for other people, then I might start my day by seeing what Cindy has uh, pulled out of the internet for me. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to just come back to the categories maybe once a month, every couple of months, um, to see, you know, clicking around, okay, I'm, I'm researching my Ohio family. So what's new in Ohio? And yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, that's the basics for using Cindy's list. It's not super complicated. It can just be a little overwhelming if you're not used to it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm not sick. That is completely allergies. Um, Oh, let me get a drink. Um, and yeah, and I will also say, you know, I, it's so funny, but if you were on here and you get frustrated, I would very much caution you against sending an irritated email to Cindy or, you know, saying something bad about this website on a, in a form like, like a genealogy Facebook site. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Cough in your ear. Um, just because this is, as far as I know, I think it's just Cindy who keeps this website up and it's, you know, I think people on the internet, you tend to forget that it is just a person on the other side of the website. I know that I, I still, um, deal with people who get frustrated using family tree notebook pages and they send me emails that are not always very nice or, you know, they'll post something that I, I read somewhere and I think, oh, that, that's kind of hurtful. And I think it's easier to do that when you can't see the person. Um, I also, again, I get people who are irritated because they need customer service in the middle of the night. And when they can't get it immediately, they're very frustrated and they feel like um, they aren't getting their money's worth. But as somebody who, you know, my business is just me, I don't have any help or anything like that. And I think Cindy's in the same boat. Um, there is a, there's just a reality of, you know, sometimes we can only get to things when we can get to them or we make mistakes or, you know, we try to do something and it's not exactly what somebody needed and um, they get frustrated, but it's a misunderstanding. Just try to keep that in mind. I know that, um, yeah, it can just be tough dealing with things through the internet. So if you do get frustrated using Cindy's list, um, just try to take a deep breath, you know, look at the frequently asked questions. And if you really get stuck, then of course, you know, you could send her an email or you could ask people. I mean, most of the genealogists I know use Cindy's list pretty often. So if you ever got stuck, you could ask a nice question, but just try to um, keep that, that tone of patience and kindness, because I think that that tone just goes a long way in general. Anyway, that was all I wanted to share today on this Friday as we prepare for the weekend. Maybe that can give you some new links so that uh, you can play and find new things to look at. Um, on your Saturday and Sunday. And then I will be, I'll be back on Monday. Um, let me look at this next week. Do we have anything going on? Not really. Uh, next week, the last week of April, I have some things to share. I'll have a little bit more information to share about the course. 
uh, the course is opening up again. I know I've got lots of people on the wait list, lots of people who've been reaching out. The course doesn't open up until um, May 1st. And that is true, excuse me, that is true for the people on the wait list. So there's a chance that the course actually won't open up to everybody in general until maybe May 2nd or the night of May 1st. I'm not sure. But I know that there were some people on the wait list who were panicking, thinking that if the course opened on May 1st, that they should have heard something by now to get a little heads up or sneak preview. Um, uh, but yeah, that's May 1st was the absolute earliest that anybody is going to hear and be able to sign up for the new course. So nobody has missed anything. Don't panic. Um, and I'll give you more information about that next week. And then I will turn off my live, which I have to find because it's a different web page. All right, there it is. Okay. Have a good weekend, you guys. I will see you later. Thank you for being here.